Okay, so it's time for another top five series video. And again, we will be looking at GPUs. Having just recently given you my top five worst picks, it's time for some quality options. Uh, there were a few ways I could have gone about this video and I've decided that I will do it in two separate videos. This version will be a bit more serious. It's actual consumer advice based on benchmarking that I've done this year. I'll be giving you my top choice in one of five categories and they will be price ranges starting from 100 US or less right up to $500 US. Now this kind of thing is a bit messy right now, a little bit tricky. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how I could tackle it. As you're no doubt aware, GPU pricing is just all over the place right now, particularly for the AMD models, but I didn't want to just recommend Nvidia because they're not being as heavily impacted by the cryptocurrency mining. Not just mining, but also global memory shortages are becoming a problem and they're causing an uptick in graphics card pricing. And this is starting to impact Nvidia graphics cards. In fact, the cost of Nvidia based graphics cards is also expected to rise and we should see a continual rise till the end of the year. So with all that in mind, I will be basing my picks on the current retail pricing, but I'll also be discussing choices, assuming that they these GPUs were selling at the MSRP, and that's the manufacturer's suggested retail price, and they're the prices consumers can expect to find under normal conditions. So that is to say when miners aren't snapping up all the graphics cards left, right, and center. So first we have the best value entry level GPU. And this one is pretty easy because just a few weeks ago I compared the GeForce GT 1030 and Radeon RX 550 in a range of games. For the most part, the 1030 was the faster of the two. It consumes slightly less power. It does overclock a little bit better and it is of course more affordable. It's pretty much a slam dunk here for Nvidia. The only real hiccup being adaptive sync technology. And that is if you have a free sync monitor, you plan on getting one, then the RX 550 is probably going to be the better buy. So certainly keep that in mind. Short of that though, the GT 1030 seems like a no brainer to me. The 1030 can also be easily had for the $70 MSRP, while the RX 550 is usually around $10 more than its $80 MSRP. And that makes it about 30% more costly right now. Even so, if both GPUs, or at least the RX 550, was selling at the MSRP, for me, I think the GT 1030 would still be my number one choice. For those of you with more than $100 to spend, but aren't comfortable going over $200, there are quite a few options available. There is the GeForce GTX 1050, 1050 Ti, Radeon RX 560, and the RX 570. The RX 560 and GTX 1050 are meant to cost $100 US, and at that price, you really could go either way. They're much of a muchness. Uh, that is to say, very similar in terms of performance. Right now, though, they are both overpriced, about $20 to $30, which is interesting as the GTX 1050 Ti is just $10 over the MSRP. And at $150, it's actually the better value option right now, in my opinion. It was previously a bad buy in comparison to those two GPUs, but with pricing the way they are, the 1050 Ti looks pretty good. Adding to that, I would normally opt for the Radeon RX 570 in this price range at the MSRP, which is $170 US. It's really the best buy, but sadly, with availability the way it is and the way these things are selling, $260 US is the current asking price. So while the RX 570 would be my number one choice typically, uh, that is to say during non-boom times, right now I would snap up the GTX 1050 Ti without hesitation. Gamers looking to spend between $200 and $300 US, they do also have a few options, though there are only three GPU choices, technically two, but uh, anyway, the GeForce GTX 1060, which is available with either three gigabytes or six gigabytes of memory, that is technically two different GPUs as the three gigabyte version is slightly cut down. Then we have the RX 580, which can be configured with either four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of memory, but both are the same RX 580 GPU. The three gigabyte GTX 1060, in my opinion, is really, it is a good value option. I know it gets hated on a lot, but 
I've still got one and for 1080p gaming, it works really well. I haven't noticed any texture problems, certainly no performance issues. And right now it is selling for $210 US at that price. It's very affordable compared to the six gigabyte model. I believe the six gigabyte models are tending up more towards $280 US. So that means while the three gigabyte model is only $10 above the MSRP, the six gigabyte version is $30 above and that's pretty much down to the fact that it is the more desirable option for not just gamers, but also miners, and of course, the increased memory pricing. Then we have that now very elusive RX 580, which should cost just $200 for the four gigabyte version or $230 for the eight gigabyte model. So at the MSRP, I would get the RX 580 eight gigabyte every day of the week, but sadly right now you can expect to pay considerably more at something like an eye-watering $310 which means it's really just a complete write-off, unfortunately. So with that being the case, my pick's probably going to shock a few people and possibly even upset some, but I'm gonna go with the three gigabyte version of the GTX 1060, given the current retail pricing. Should pricing calm down and return to the MSRP, so sort of the normal pricing, then I would again take the RX 588 gigabyte. If you have around $400 to spend, your choices are very limited, though they are less limited than they were a few months ago, or at least they should be. Along with the GeForce GTX 1070, there is now a second GPU that's been slapped with a $400 MSRP, and that is of course AMD's Radeon RX Vega 56. And I know, I know, the availability pricing, it's a bit bad right now, so it's not technically a $400 GPU, but hopefully one day it will be. Uh, at the time of researching this video, the GTX 1070, it was priced around $420 US, which isn't too bad. Meanwhile, the cheapest Vega 56 card was selling for about $520 US, which is kind of bad. <laughs> so obviously at those prices, you'd have to go with the GTX 1070. That said though, here in the land down under, you can buy Vega 56 for $630 Aussie. That's actually not too bad because the GTX 1070s, they typically cost around $600. Um, still though, paying more for Vega 56 right now just really isn't ideal for a few reasons. I'd say firstly of which is the fact that really only reference cards are available at this point. AMD stock cooler is pretty rubbish to be honest. Secondly, I know you guys are going to be upset when I say this, but Vega really isn't that efficient. You can improve the situation by undervolting, but that really only gets you so far. And when you sit it next to something like the GTX 1070, it just pales in comparison when it comes to efficiency. Having said that though, for the most part, Vega 56 is typically faster and under certain conditions is a lot faster. At the low level, API performance in particular is very encouraging. So for me, if the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 GPUs were selling at the $400 MSRP or close enough to, I'd probably get the Radeon GPU. However, at current prices, the GTX 1070 is certainly the smarter choice. Finally, the last battle can be seen at $500, or at least it should be. Uh, looking at the MSRPs, we have the GTX 1080 and RX Vega 64 GPUs. At that price, picking between the two would be tough, I'd say. I think once we get custom Vega 64 graphics cards, uh, you really could go either way on that one. However, right now we only have those shoddy reference cards, and to be clear, when I say that the PCB design and the components used by AMD, they're all perfectly fine. Uh, it's really the blower style air cooler that's complete and utter trash. Unless of course that is you have a 20 meter display cable and you house your PC in a separate room, and then the reference cooler isn't too bad. Short of that though, you're probably going to need some impressive earplugs to help you avoid any throttling issues. So for now, the GeForce GTX 1080 is the best option here, at least in my opinion. And there are a few decent options for around $530 to $560 US. I don't recommend you spend much more than that. I certainly wouldn't go over $600, for example, for the more premium 1080 models. And that's because the 1080 Ti does offer considerably more performance. And base models started around $750 US. Well, I hope that helps out any of you unfortunate enough to be trying to purchase a new graphics card in this current climate. It really comes down to pricing, so make sure you compare the options in your region. Typically speaking, AMD and Nvidia are super competitive on pricing, at least when looking at the MSRPs. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. If you liked this video, then you know what to do. You're a 
you're a smart lot. Speaking of which, if I got anything wrong in this video, if you disagree with any of my picks, then be sure to let me know about it in the comments below. It probably goes without saying, but do let me know. And also, uh, let me know what your top five GPU list from the last few years looks like. Then I can steal that and make another video. Uh, it's a pretty easy gig, this. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time when I present your work as my own.